Hi, my name is Stephanie and today I wanted to share my thoughts on fathering autism. So if you don't know what I'm talking about or what that channel is or who those people are, where have you been? But in the case that you don't know who they are, I will link their channel in the description box. Really quickly, Fathering Autism is a YouTube channel run by Asa and Priscilla Moss, and they are the parents of Abigail, who is a teenager on the autism spectrum, who is also nonverbal. Um, she'd probably be considered like level three. I also have a son named Isaiah. He is about like graduation age of from high school. I don't remember how old exactly exactly he is, um, and he is not autistic. And so basically they vlog their family life. Of course, now that they've gotten to be a bigger channel, because like right now, as of making this video, they're a little bit over 450,000 subscribers. So nearing half a million subscribers, pretty big channel, a lot of influence. If I ever hear, you know, parents of autistic children asking for YouTube channels, they're named multiple times in those threads. So they're definitely a big voice on YouTube. Uh, concerning autism and they do their best to kind of help educate people, help people understand their daughter and what autism is like in their family and stuff like that. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you may have noticed before that I've worn their merch, shouted them out before. I've even referenced Abby directly in my functioning labels video. But there is another thing that Fathering Autism is big on promoting on their channel, and that is ABA. Now, if you didn't know, I made a two hour, 10 minute long <laughs> video on ABA, um, its history, um, some common practices, concerns, those sorts of things. If you are not, uh, if you have not watched that, I highly encourage you to do so. I'll, I'll link it somewhere. Now, part of the pressure for me to complete that video and get that out is, actually fathering autism um, and seeing how many people seem to attribute everything like success in Abby's life to ABA. Now, before we go any further, I want to make it abundantly clear. This is not a hate video. If you're looking just to hate on people, that's not what I'm here for. That's never what I'm here for. So you can, you can click off. I'm sure there's other places on the internet where you can thrive. But this is not a hate video. This is not an exposed video. Um, this is not something to just bash people or make people feel bad or make people look bad. That is not my intention. And I wanna make that very clear. And that kind of behavior is not something I wanna see in my comment section either. In addition, I think that Fathering Autism as their family has done a lot um, in giving autism a better connotation, I guess the word I'm looking for is like trying to battle the stigma basically around autism. And I also know that they genuinely believe that the choices they're making and what, what they're doing with Abby is in her best interest. They want the best for Abby and I 100% believe that. They seem like very level-headed people, very reasonable people, and I don't believe that if they felt that something was causing Abby harm that they would do it. My concern really lies with the amount of promotion of ABA because they've felt that ABA has done a lot for them and their family and so that again leads into them talking about it. That's just a natural occurrence for them. Now this is also th another thing that I do want to note is that Asa from Fathering Autism does make videos addressing things that they didn't like about ABA, things that they modified in their ABA programs with Abby. For example, they don't let people suppress her stims. They don't make her not stim. They don't make her act like someone else. They don't use like the kinds of um, really bad aversives that are somehow still allowed in ABA. Um, so they, they, they do modify things and I appreciate that and they do call out things that could be potentially abusive or um, talk about the kind of ABA therapists that are coming into your home that are working with your children and they definitely do encourage that involvement as a parent in your child's therapy not only for the consistency at home and at whatever place they might go to but also for the care of your child. But my concern is in the fact that you can't, obviously you can't make someone watch all your videos, right? Um, and I feel like a lot of times they 
have people in their comments, again, this isn't really their fault necessarily, who may either not have seen those critical videos or uh, think that the kind of ABA that they show is the ABA that they'll be trained in or that they'll receive with their children and quite frankly, that is not going to happen in a lot of places. Um, a lot of people who have seen it and they're like, oh wow, this is so amazing. It's so different, it's so great. I wanna become a BCBA. And a lot of people do take that perspective of, you know, if I become an ABA professional, I can make it a better thing. But so far, that's not what's happened in ABA's history. People might practice differently, but that doesn't mean that ABA doesn't approve those things that were bad then and are still bad now. As much as we would like to believe that the ABA we see Abby receiving is all ABA and it's just, you know, the skills training and someone just comes into their house and sits and kind of lets people adjust and just works on like doing some chores or works on doing some things that's not going to be your typical experience with ABA. Um, and even in the ABA that I've seen, I've had, uh, felt a little wary about some things. Again, they're not perfect. They're human beings and I'm not perfect either. I don't know everything. Just in case you didn't know, <laughs> I don't know everything. And I can't tell other people what to do. I'm just concerned about the amount of almost like approval of ABA when ABA is a very, very broken system that doesn't seem to honestly be getting better if you look at their journal. When I saw Fathering Autism's channel, I will say that they helped me a lot because as a high functioning level one autistic, whatever, um, as someone who is verbal, as someone who can present themselves, socially or whatever, um, I would be told that I don't get to weigh in on things because you don't understand lower functioning autistics or basically people would try to paint this picture of these unmanageable, horrible children who were basically feral, who were practically hopeless, just burdens on their families and you don't know the lengths that we have to go to to deal with these children. And part of me wondered, like, was that true? Like, was I just seeing autism through, like, the only the good things? And I really, really appreciate Fathering Autism for what they've done to show the world Abby because I learned through Abby how much I can tell that we're on the same spectrum. Like, I see so much of myself in her. I've talked about this before in my Functioning Labels video, if you wanna check that out before I go on and on again. But it helped me understand that everyone is still a person, no matter what function level. Um, it really helped me personally remove some of the stigma that I had kind of learned throughout my life because I am late diagnosed. I didn't know everything and I still don't, and so I just, wanted to pause and say thank you for that because letting the world know who Abby is is really beautiful and Abby is such a wonderful and strong person and um, I, I'm just thankful that I've gotten to know what I can of her through those videos. And when I saw all of that, I was kind of in this mode where I realized like there's all these life changes are happening for me and I realized I want to be able to help other autistic people, maybe younger autistic people or maybe people who need more support. I wanted to be able to help them. Um, yeah, I make videos, but I wanted to do something in person. How can I help people directly? And because of their videos, I really thought about going into ABA. Uh, before I understood more about it, um, I definitely heard a lot of people saying ABA is abuse and I was like, well, that sounds really extreme and I am not a person who likes to just go along with extremes. I look into things and I research them and I'm seeing this very modified ABA. They're just teaching skills. I'm like, oh, well, skills are cool, you know? <laughs> um, and so I looked into becoming an RBT because that was something I could do immediately I have a high school diploma and I would just have 40 hours of training and I would be in. And then I asked the autistic community about it, I uh, found out how people felt about it, and then that's kind of how I chose my path for becoming an OTA. Thing is, what I didn't see still happens. So what I mean by that is that I thought that all they did was just like the visits with Brandy, 
um, to their house and that could very well be because I just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> but I was under the impression that it was just um, a few times a week, ABA skills or whatever with Brandy, like helping learn where to put the groceries and helping, you know, wipe down the table. Like what's wrong with that? But that's not all that's happening. So she goes to a school called J JSA. Um, I looked up their website. They do use a variety of different things in their programs. So I do appreciate that they don't just do ABA. The problem is, so like part of their time will be like occupational therapy and speech therapy and like different types of therapies um, and kind of like your like school time type of stuff. And then the other half is ABA and we're talking discrete trial training, uh, table work ABA. That kind of bothered me because I don't know why she, like, this is a personal thing. Um, I'm just bothered by her having to go to a school that's teaching her these things and then it, pounding her with ABA half of those days. And then on top of that, having to see Brandy. Like if I was her, I wouldn't want to see Brandy either at that point. <laughs> um, and I get that she likes Brandy. I get that she likes her school and likes going to see her friends or whatever. But the amount of emphasis on ABA troubles me. It concerns me because not only am I concerned for all the people who are going to get an ABA they didn't think they were going to get um, or don't know any better to be able to advocate for a different kind of ABA. A big concern for me is the amount of stress that is put on her not meaning to. So, okay, I appreciate their practical approach. I do. Um, I appreciate that they still take her places even though um, it's been difficult sometimes because the, it's true like sometimes we can handle it sometimes we can't sometimes it's a good experience sometimes it's not but that doesn't mean we can never leave the house that doesn't mean we can't go enjoy things I love that they take her to like go on walks in the park and have fun with her friends and like that's really awesome to me I really enjoy that I'm really happy that they encourage other families too to not be afraid but sometimes I think that just because, again, they're, they're, they're a very active family in that they're very involved in, like, everything. <laughs> they're always going. And the cool thing about Abby is she seems to like to go, 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 too. Um, that is something I can't relate to. <laughs> I'm not very interested in going and going, but she seems to enjoy that. But I think that sometimes they forget that because they're kind of acclimated to that, that's the thing they enjoy. They like to go and go and go. That sometimes Abby's not going to be able to handle that. And so, like, it's kind of ironic to me to see sometimes their frustration because it's like, yeah, but what did you expect? Does that make sense? Like, sometimes I get, like, we can work through things and not always just, like, giving in when someone, like, starts to fuss or whatever. But a lot of times they're like, oh, you can do it, you can do it, and then keep moving. And you don't, you don't get it. <laughs> we shouldn't have, like, she shouldn't have to melt down for you to understand that she can't do this right now. Um, but again, like, they know their own child. I can't, th and I only see what's on camera, right? Like, I can't tell you how to parent, and I'm not trying to, and maybe this sounds like I am. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just concerned, okay? I'm concerned. Well, again, like, I think that it's totally cool to, to take her places and to do things, because I think she really enjoys doing things. Um, just maybe not being so frustrated, and again, I'm not the parent in that situation. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't experience what they're experiencing. So I can't, like, demand them to be perfect. But sometimes things get labeled as behaviors that aren't behaviors. Does that make sense? Um, and I know Asa tries really hard with that. I know that Asa has talked before, like, meltdowns are not problem behaviors. But sometimes when he's talking, I, I've noticed sometimes in the comments people have to remind him like hey Asa remember that problem like uh, meltdowns aren't problem behaviors so it's, sometimes it's hard because with the ABA mindset you can kind of start to systemize everything you know everything is you know can be determined through an FBA well no it can't a lot of things can but a lot of things also can't. So there's a problem when you start viewing everything about your child through ABA, about your life through ABA. That doesn't make sense. And again, while I think they have definitely taken a lot of concession to say like, sometimes this is just what it is. Like, that's great. Um, but I'm worried for Abby because as resilient as she is, 
when you get older, uh, especially for some reason in females, um, autistic females tend to around like their older teens to young adulthood, their symptoms get worse. I don't know how else to put that. Your autisticness starts to show some more. And I think it's because like all that stuff, it just becomes more and more pressure. Um, and I, that worries me because she can't tell you if she doesn't like how she's being treated. She can't tell you if she's sick of hearing match to same. Okay, so now that I've rambled on about the whole ABA side of things, um, again, I don't think that they ever intend to harm Abby in any way. And I'm not there. I'm not her parent. Okay, I'm not her parent. Um, one thing that does bother me with ABA in general is that attitude of like every behavior is a manipulation. Well, yes, um, I think that sometimes ABA almost, or almost even maybe being nonverbal too, kind of makes people have to manipulate you for you to respond because you ignore their needs when they try to like get you to understand, if that makes sense. But a lot of times I see her behavior as like, oh, you know better, or like, this is some form of manipulation, but sometimes it's not. Like, sometimes it's just not. Um, but again, I'm not her parent. I don't know the signs. Maybe they can tell really easily when it is and when it isn't. But ABA often does take that approach where like everything is to get something out of this. And that's not always true because you're dealing with a human being with a mind. Okay, sorry, really? Really, seriously, moving on from the ABA aspect. Another thing that a lot of people bring up that I don't really know how I feel about necessarily is the amount that Abby is put on camera without her consent. But to be fair, um, at least here in the United States, the parents have the right to consent for her or not, if that makes sense. So just like any family channel, I think kind of runs into this issue. They tend to, to get criticism for having their children on camera and how much they have them on camera and how much of their child they have on camera, if that makes sense. So I don't think that's unique to fathering autism. It's just that I think that sometimes because she is nonverbal, because she is a higher support needs, and I don't know like all of her diagnoses, I don't know I don't know everything, obviously. <laughs> but it is kind of seen that there's kind of an assumption that like Abby's never gonna see these videos and understand their implications. Abby's never gonna be affected by these videos. Of course, like the main crit criticisms that people tend to have is with like the potty training videos and because she was sitting on the toilet, but like she was clothed. So like some people were trying to say that was abuse. I don't think that's abuse, but I could see where that could be problematic for her in the future because there are a lot of autistics that people thought they would never talk thought they would never work, thought they would never this, never that, and they just developed way delayed. And who knows? You know, a lot of people don't ever speak because they don't prefer to, or maybe they just can't, and that's okay. But there is, like, that presumption there that that's not gonna affect her, and a lot of autistics are concerned because they lived lives <laughs> where people thought things wouldn't affect them, that do. So I can see kind of where people are coming from that with that. I don't know how I feel about it. I guess I would point out that like in the attempt to show like how we deal with X, Y, and Z in ABA, um, you know, they'll also show like when they did an, uh, like they do overcorrection. The whole overcorrection with picking up like some papers that she like flung around or something made a lot of people, even pro ABA, kind of uncomfortable because of the way it was done. Um, I was more uncomfortable in that he added that you could just not talk to her while she did that, because to me that's more emotionally damaging than it is like, this is how we correct what we did. Yes, things have consequences, but like, I don't know, some of it just did not sit right with me in a, in a, in a big way. Another thing was like, I've seen where Brandy was telling Abby to look at her uh, Brandy is the ABA therapist that comes to their home, and she was closer. Abby doesn't like being able to, like, look, she's not very good at looking up at people when she's really close, and Asa explains that to Brandy. Brandy basically ignored him, from my recollection. I could be wrong, but she kind of ignored him and asked her to do it anyway, and that, again, is that compliance, like, you will follow through, and that annoyed me because, like, Asa made it clear, like, she is not comfortable looking up at you that close. And for her to, like, 
I don't know if she barely moved back a step or if she didn't move at all. I don't remember, but she still demanded like look at me and it just, it got under my skin. It bothered me. But showing all of that on camera, uh, a lot of times they'll talk about, well, yeah, she's 13. She's gonna be a teenager. We wanna make sure to treat her like a teenager. But I don't know if you would show Isaiah's disciplinary process on camera when he was 13. Does that make sense? Um, so like sometimes, like now that she's getting older, I don't know how long it's going to be appropriate to do some of these videos because I get that people are intrigued and they're interested, but at the same time, like again with Isaiah, like yeah, you kind of say a few words sometimes and like joke around, but you wouldn't put anything in there that's not okay with Isaiah. Abby can't tell you what's okay to be like edited into the vlog. I have appreciated when Asa has turned off the camera when she shook her head no about having the camera like near her or in her face. And I appreciate that because she communicated she didn't want to be on camera and he stopped. And I do genuinely appreciate that. It's just, I am concerned about some of those aspects maybe don't belong online anymore. <laughs> just because like, if you're gonna say you want to treat her like a teenager, like you wouldn't treat Isaiah like that. Does that make sense? I don't know. Like you wouldn't show things that Isaiah wasn't okay with on the vlog that had to do with like his disciplinary process or something that's like super embarrassing. On a side note, I'm also not really a fan of Priscilla's like side job type of thing. Um, basically she's part of a multi-level marketing company um, and she does really well. And for a little bit there, they were kind of talking about it a lot and of course like they're they're happy they're succeeding like that's really cool but like knowing how mlms are i was a little kind of put off by it now recently they haven't really been talking about it that much and i did make a comment about it especially because you know it's not necessarily fair to be like you can succeed like priscilla does but Priscilla has a large audience where you don't, you know, if that makes sense. Um, so she said she would be happy to address it in a video. If she did, I didn't see it. If not, um, if it's coming eventually, I do look forward to that because I am interested in that. I, I don't think that's like a major issue. It's just something that kind of bothered me. Okay, so to wrap this up, hopefully. One, I don't, I don't hate the Moss family. I think they're wonderful people. I love all of their personalities. I think they're really kind. I think that they genuinely love Abby and that Abby loves her family. Isaiah's like the coolest person ever. And then like Summer's amazing and that's not, there. she's not actually related, I don't know. If you don't watch it, I'm not gonna explain. But <laughs> so like, I really do, I like them. If I met them, that would be amazing. If we could talk, that'd be amazing. I'd even be open to collaborating if they ever wanted to, but I get like, we have very, very different reaches and everything. And like, that's what I'm trying to say is like, this is not a hate video. I don't like dislike them as people. I'm just saying that there are some things that concern me because in my personal opinion, from my personal research, from people's testimonies, I feel that if ABA is still a thing that it needs to change, as a whole. It shouldn't be gambling to figure out if you're going to get someone who is verifiably abusive or not because it's all okay under their regulations. So if ABA would address the issues and say, this isn't okay, this isn't okay, this isn't okay, maybe I would be okay with ABA as uh, an option for maybe some people. I just really worry because of how dysregulated the whole thing is and yeah basically I'm concerned because people look up to fathering autism and they see like these people who are thriving with their child who most people would be lamenting a sob story about and so they kind of feel like if Abby does good at these things like wow Abby succeeds that means ABA is why and while there are some good concepts about ABA it when it's put in the ABA format, it just ends out kind of ugly. Um, so, like, while I get, like, pulling some ideas from ABA, I'm just not a fan of ABA at all. <laughs> a lot of things that people consider ABA isn't actually ABA. Anyway, I'm gonna stop getting into this because I already talked about this in a giant video. I'm concerned because it feels like they're saying, like, this is the standard. If fathering autism can do this, you know, why, how did they get there? It was ABA. Like, Anyway, if you enjoy fathering autism and um, you hate my guts now, I'm sorry. 
Um, again, I really, really, really don't mean to be like hateful. I am thankful for the amount of autism awareness they have spread and how much that they've shared Abby with us and let us see how wonderful their daughter is and how wonderful their family is. And I really do appreciate that. I hope that they won't see this video and think that I'm just trying to be mean and just being like a giant jerk um, because I'm sure it probably feels like that, I guess, because like no one wants to hear like, here's all the things that I don't like about you, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, I'm gonna try to end this video because it's, it's long and rambly and I feel really awkward because I'm concerned, but like I don't want to be a jerk. Does that make sense? Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, found it interesting or whatever else, you can like it, you can dislike it, whatever you want to do. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please remain respectful. And uh, if you're interested in autism related stuff, I do release a video every Thursday at 4 p.m. at Central Standard Time on this channel, so you can always feel free to subscribe. I hope that you're having a wonderful week and see me in my next video. Bye!